to share a few words with you that might surprise you, but will come as well-known words to this group to my left. Renegade, creative, inspired, accomplished, expert, passionate. These are some of the more favorable words that have been described, used to describe these women, and I'm sure there's a few others as well. Christine Kimmelford Lynch, and I'm the author of Rules for Renegades. We provide seminars, products, coaching, and we help businesses, small businesses, get big fast, and huge businesses act like they're small. My ventures alone, I've raised about $150 million in private equity just for uh, those new ventures, aside from my investment banking days when I took a bunch of people public. So my background tends to be a little bit more um, business plan, selling to investors, uh, investment vision, and then uh, a little bit about uh, execution on that. I'm really apparently a bad manager, so I don't build big teams of people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and shopintuition.com. Intuition was started as a way to pay for tuition for my two kids at the time. I was a single mom going through a horrible divorce and I started selling clothes out of the back of my car doing shopping parties every day. And now I have a huge website business. I employ 30 people and I just got my own show on PBC. I've been on a year and a half. And my kids are college graduates and paying their own bills. <laughs> co-owner of three restaurants, one in Las Vegas, one in downtown LA, and one in Santa Monica, Paul Porter Grill, and then one downtown Ciudad. <laughs> we have my partner Susan Feniger and I started in 1981, just following our passion and our dream and our love of cooking, and we learned a lot about being an entrepreneur, not until about 15 years later, when we got out of the nonprofit world and into the coffee world. <laughs> But um, it's been a really fun ride, and we now have 365 employees, and we're going to do $19 million this year, which I never dreamed in a million years could happen to me. So I see different members here tonight who are members of Ladies Who Launch. And similar to, to Step Up, we really try and create communities of support and inspiration to really help you move forward, because it's very hard for women to be stuck and to feel like they have a great idea, but they don't know where to go with it. So what Ladies Who Launch does is give them support and resources in 50 cities throughout the country and online at ladieswholaunch.com. There was an article um, last week in the New York Times on the cover of the Thursday Style, and it was talking about the Make Mine a Million program. And we talked about this a little bit before. And the idea behind it is that um, women are not given access to enough venture capital, and if they were, then their businesses would become more successful. They would be million dollar businesses as opposed to less than a million. And the argument that um, perhaps success is not defined by revenue streams, but by lifestyle, is one that I think women are talking about every day. How do you build um, a career within a lifestyle or think about the life that you want and what sort of entrepreneurial or career do you want within that? And everyone weighed in in a very different way on our conference call, and I would love to talk about it again because there's wildly diverse opinions. The thing about that is I can't stand when people say, well, I, can't, I don't have access to capital because I'm a woman, so I can't be as successful. All right, so first of all, throw that away. You, know, you have to take 100% responsibility for your life, baby. It is your life. You're just going to have to rock it yourself. I think that I, it actually saddens me to think that women, A, don't feel like they have access to capital, or B, if they had access to capital, wouldn't use it because they really want to limit the size of their business because they think something smaller is cuter. Um, I do advise, though, that, that if you want to build a business and you want to control it and keep it within your control and you think that that's a wiser way to run a business, then great. But it, it just bums me out to think that women, when they think about business, think, you know what, I want to be successful, but, but not that successful, because there's all these other things in life I want. Well, someone's going to pay for all those other things. And I don't know where everybody thinks that's going to come from. You know, Somebody's got to be successful somewhere. So it's either you, um, or it's somebody that you marry, and who knows what's going to happen in, in that future. So I would urge people to not be so like concerned about, well, am I going to have my lifestyle? Forget about your lifestyle, you'll figure that out, but right? if you love what you're doing, you'll build a lifestyle around it. From my personal experience is that you have to work hard at everything, and I just try to come from an authentic place. I mean, 
I've, I've sacrificed my kids, um, had a, a working mom their whole life, but my biggest success is that they have the best work ethic in, in their personal lives. So to me, that's my biggest success. Um, I, you know, have had a failed marriage. I, you know, have had relationships, but it's all. Part, I think it's all part of life, the ups and downs. I don't. I don't define it that way. I just try and wake up every day to be authentic. Try and, and keep the balance. And some things, some days, some things fall through the cracks, and some days it's a home run. Great. <laughs> Too, and I've really found that my appetite for work has changed a lot since my twenties when I started working, when I, it just felt like nothing to work six double shifts a week. And that, it wasn't even enough for me. I just loved working so much. So, uh, but I have done 180 degrees, you know, I've got two kids and a 23 year marriage and I really crave time to make those, my marriage and my family life as successful as my business. And it does take away from the work, but, um, I, but I also think that women bring something to the workplace. I know people stop working for male dominantly male uh, run restaurant groups and they come and work for me and Susan because of our tolerance for um, balance in your life and our, our we re actually really promote it and, and I think that the most successful companies probably do want people who are working for them who uh, are well-rounded. And there's only a certain amount of workaholic, obsessive kind of work that'll get you somewhere, and then you start to self-destruct, I think. So it's good for a certain a period of time, and then I think you have to figure out a way to be well-rounded. We're looking at fairly male-dominated venture capital, real estate development. I mean, this is, I don't know, 90% men? I would say 90, 99. 99 I don't think I've ever met another female developer. So there you have it. <laughs> do, do you operate differently as a woman? I mean, you're blonde and very pretty. It, does that, it, that must be a contrast in some ways. It is a total crack up. It is a bizarre um, business to be in. I think I've always had a pretty all business attitude. And I think that's how I've had the jobs that I've had even before I started companies. And the more you're in those roles, the more you're surrounded by men, and the more you just talk and work the way that you do. <laughs> um, quickly, the best piece of advice that you ever got from anyone? <laughs> Watching the story. Okay. Meaning, meaning, you know, don't get ahead of yourself. Because, I mean, in my business, your inventory is your cash. So if you're um, upside down and you have inventory and no cash, it's a problem. So it's really a problem, right? Yeah. So, um, and I, that's probably the best advice that I've gotten and to, you know, to really pay attention. The details in my business. So, uh, really know what you're building, what it costs, and uh, yeah, very, very detail oriented kind of. Chat the little stuff? Yeah, unfortunately. It's kind of a boring answer, but it's true. I think it was this guy, Kirk, who worked for me, and he was really trying to teach me this lesson because he was older and wiser about what par was. Big golfer. And. <laughs> So once I really grasp, you know, what par is, you know, and who's above par, who's below par, I understood it. He really showed me, and then I fired his ass. <laughs> and um, that's how we really understand. He was below par, and it was cool that he taught me about what par was, so I could then fire his ass and fire something much better. <laughs> the first time she we did a TV show with her and um, the one thing I learned from her that I really was so it, it struck me so deep it was how she would every t person she meets or met I keep thinking she's still here um, she would just look them in the eye and ask them a personal question and get get have this exchange that was very very personal and I saw her meet you know hundreds of people at a chef school or at a book signing or wherever, you know, we did a couple of projects together, and I took that on as something that I wanted to incorporate into the way I behave, and it helps in business in every sense, whether it's your employees, we have 300 and some employees, or whether it's, you know, people you meet at a book signing, or people that you're trying to get money from, or whatever it is, really connect.